Many people look at MS-DOS today and think it is just a command line. But to others, it was a canvas for unparalleled productivity, at least back in the day. There were countless pieces of software, not even mentioning games, released for MS-DOS, such as word processors, file managers, system utilities, you name it really. However, most DOS operation was and still is performed mainly using a keyboard. Which then begs the question, can you use a mouse on MS-DOS? The answer is a resounding yes, and it goes further back than you may think. In 1983, Microsoft released the Microsoft Mouse, which came bundled with its drivers and a few fun games and utilities. It differed from its successors mainly in the fact that you had to install a separate ISA card with the mouse port into your computer to use it whereas later mouse models would soon transition to a serial port and then PS2. Obviously, we're in the era of USB and Bluetooth mice as we speak, but we don't emulate that. So let's go a little further in time to the release of MS-DOS version 6.22, this version being the latest commercially available version of MS-DOS. In this video, we'll be using a very similar 486 setup to the one we use in our new Windows for Workgroups 3.11 video. We'll be installing Microsoft Mouse version 9.01. When you finish configuring your machine, enter the BIOS, set primary and secondary master to auto and everything else to none, set your floppy drive to the correct format, move on to the BIOS feature setup screen and ensure that your boot order is set to the A drive, insert the first disk of your MS-DOS 6.22 floppy set in there while you're at it, and then save and exit from the BIOS. Install MS-DOS as usual, going through allocating your hard drive space, setting the directory where it will be installed, and switching disks as you go along. And of course, restarting when you're prompted to do so. Boom! You are now at the command line. Now, insert the supplementary disk of the floppy set, which contains the MS-DOS shell that debuted in version 5.0 but was later removed in version 6. Probably because people didn't bother to check how to stop it from loading on startup, but oh well. Installing the MS-DOS shell is not necessary here, but is a great way to showcase mouse operations on MS-DOS. To install MS-DOS shell from this floppy disk, type in setup in the directory where you install DOS which would be C colon slash DOS. Select all, choose VGA as a display adapter, at least with this configuration, and wait for files to copy. Once it's done, restart your machine. Once you're back at the DOS prompt, type in DOS shell to enter the MS-DOS shell and confirm that everything is operational thus far. Now, go ahead and install the Microsoft Mouse 9.01 disk in your floppy drive. Navigate to your A drive in the DOS shell and start setup by selecting setup.exe. The setup process is as straightforward as ever. Make sure you select install software for MS-DOS only if you're only going to use MS-DOS on your machine and double check which directory the mouse files will be installed in. On this screen, make sure the option load mouse driver automatically at power on is selected. The first option, which consists of adding the mouse directory to your path, is entirely optional. When files are done copying, you will be prompted to run Mouse Manager, which I recommend. Here you can select cursor size, mouse sensitivity and acceleration, and various other settings. This also gives you a chance to test your mouse immediately after setup. Once you're done, save your settings and restart the machine. Back at the DOS prompt, run DOS shell to see your newly activated mouse in action. On a related note, let's take a look at our autoexecute.bat file. To start DOS shell with mouse support, be sure to add DOS shell to the very end of the file so that all the necessary drivers load beforehand. This also applies if you have a CD-ROM driver installed, which we've already done a tutorial on, link in description. But for now, enjoy your fully working mouse in MS-DOS.